Section Zero: Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Denise Nordell. Section Zero of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Historical Introduction. The Latin poetry of the Christian Church presents a tempting field for the exercise of scholarship and research. The relation in which it stands on the one hand to the classic poetry of Greece and Italy, and on the other to the liturgies of the Eastern Church, the placing of accent in the room of quantity, and the rise and growth of rhyme, these and such like matters will always prove attractive to experts and specialists. They are, however, quite beyond the scope of this brief paper. Those who wish to make an exhaustive study of a subject which has many sides and a copious literature would do well to betake themselves to such standard works as are noted below. The general reader may find something to profit and to interest him in the following general survey. The title placed on our Saviour's cross, setting forth his accusation, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, was written in three languages, in Hebrew, and in Greek, and in Latin. That collocation of languages gives the order in which the hymnody of the Church developed. Hebrew hymnody is contained for the most part in the Hebrew Psalter, for the distinction between psalms and hymns is not one that admits of being applied to all Hebrew poetry. Our Lord and his disciples, as they went out to the Mount of Olives after the institution and first observance of the Supper Sacrament, sang a portion of the great Hallel, which consists of Psalms 113 to 116 inclusive. Their doing so is described in the New Testament as singing an hymn, just as the singing of Paul and Silas in the Philippian prison is said to be singing hymns unto God. In the Eastern or Greek Church, hymnody was in both private and public use from earliest times. The oft-quoted letter of the younger Pliny, written soon after his arrival as proconsul in the provinces of Bithynia and Pontus, which took place in A.D. 110, informs the emperor that it was the practice of the Christians to meet together on a certain day and sing antiphonally, secum in vesum, a hymn to Christ as their God, while the apostolical constitutions, which take us back to the life of the church in the second or third centuries, enjoin the use of morning and evening hymns of praise for God's beneficence by Christ. From the ample stores of Oriental hymnology there have come into modern collections many of their gems, thanks to the scholarship and versifying skill of Dr. Neal, Keeble, and Canon Bright. To the first named we are indebted for such well-known renderings of Greek sacred pieces as Fierce was the wild billow, and the day is past and over, as also for Art thou weary, art thou languid? From the author of The Christian Year, we have a beautiful English rendering of a first or second century Greek hymn preserved by Basil, Hail gladdening light, of his pure glory poured, and from Canon Bright we have the Vesper of lamplighting hymn, with its opening invocation, Light of gladness, beam divine. The Western Church came under Eastern influence in the matter of hymn composition in the fourth century. The first to compose hymns in Latin verse was Hilary of Poitiers. This theologian was banished to Phrygia by the Emperor Constantius because of his defense of the Nicene Creed from the attacks of the Arian party. During the bishop's exile, his daughter Abra wrote to inform him that she had been sought in marriage, although only in her thirteenth year. This drew forth a reply in which the father left the decision to her own choice, indicating at the same time a personal preference for continued virginity. Enclosed in the communication were a hymnus matutinus and a hymnus vesperinus. The morning hymn, beginning Lucis Lagitur Splendida, is still extant, and has been styled the oldest authentic original Latin song of praise to Christ as God. It is, however, more than doubtful if the one for evening use survives, for the hymn, Ad Silly Clara, Consum Dignus Sidera, given in the Benedictine edition of Hilary's works, belongs to the 6th or 7th century, and is probably of Irish authorship. Another name associated with the rise of sacred Latin poetry is that of Ambrose, Bishop of Milan. It will ever be to the glory of this fourth-century father that Augustine ascribed to him his conversion, and sought baptism at his hands. His illustrious convert tells, in the ninth book of his Confessions, how the bishop defended the churches of Milan against the intrusion of Arian modes of worship, in spite of the efforts put forth by Justina, mother of the emperor Valentinian, to obtain one of the basilicas for the use of the party she favored. Alarmed by a report that he might be removed by force, the devout people of the city surrounded the bishop day and night, ready to die with him rather than allow him to be apprehended. He, on his part, to stimulate their zeal and sustain their courage, supplied them with hymns to sing in honor of the Trinity. Then, writes Augustine, it was first instituted that, after the manner of the Eastern churches, 
hymns and psalms should be sung, lest the people should wax faint through the tediousness of sorrow, and from that day to this the custom is retained, diverse, yea, almost all thy, congregations throughout other parts of the world following herein. Well nigh a hundred hymns have at one time or another passed under the title Ambrosian, but the number of authenticated pieces is pitiably small, not exceeding four. In that small group, the Te Deum Laudamus, at one time ascribed to the Bishop of Milan, does not find a place. For as in the case of the Gloria in Excelsis Deo, the Deus Irae, and the Veni Sancte Spiritus, the question who wrote the Te Deum has not received a final answer, if, indeed, it ever will. Of this, however, we may be well assured, that in the time of Jerome of the fifth century, hymns were in general use throughout the Western as in the Eastern Church. Writing to Marcellus, that most scholarly and erudite among the fathers of the Latin Church, assured his correspondent, you could not go into the field, but you might hear the plowman at his alleluia, the mower at his hymns, and the vine-dresser singing David's psalms. From the days of Hilary and of Ambrose, of Augustine and of Jerome, onwards through the patristic period of church history, and all down the medieval centuries, there never failed to be a goodly succession of hymn-writers. To mention these, however briefly, would necessitate a violation of the limits of this essay. We refrain from attempting even an enumeration all the more readily, because an opportunity of giving brief biological notes of the more outstanding contributors to the treasures of sacred Latin poetry will occur in the following pages, when specimens of their masterpieces are submitted to the reader. A few sentences may be added bearing upon the hymns contained in the service books of the Church of Rome, and upon the relation of Latin hymnody to the churches of the Reformation. The use of hymns for purposes of private devotion preceded their insertion in the liturgical books of the pre-Reformation Church. Up to the seventh century the breviaries which contained the prayers to be offered at the canonical hours had as matter to be sung only the words of Scripture. But the Spanish Council, which met at Toledo in A.D. 633, laid down the general principle that if in the worship of the sanctuary prayers may be offered in the words of uninspired men, so also may praise be sung. From that time the churches of Western Christendom inserted hymns into their service books, some of these compositions being of earlier date, but the larger number being of more recent times and of purely local interest. As every diocese and religious order claimed and exercised the right to construct its own ritual, missal, and breviary, there was endless variety of contents, considerable alterations of old compositions, and a general deterioration of quality. By the time Leo X reached St. Peter's chair, the need for revision had become clamant. Under the direction of that Medicean Pope, the collection of hymns in use at Rome was recast, and ultimately the entire breviary appeared in revised form, when Urban the Eighth was Pope in 1631. In this revised Roman breviary, which is now in general use throughout the Papal Communion, the hymns of earliest composers, say from Hilary to Gregory, are for the most part allowed to remain, although in some cases altered without real amendment. But in the case of those pieces which could not be conformed to the laws of correct Latinity, there was an entire recasting. According to one authority, himself a revisionist, upwards of nine hundred alterations were made in the interests of meter, and the first lines of more than thirty hymns were altered. The Marquis of Butte executed the translation of the Roman breviary in 1879, and then gave it as his deliberate judgment that the revisers, quote, with deplorable taste made a series of changes in the texts of the hymns, which has been disastrous both to the literary merit and the historical interest of the poems, unquote. The breviary of Paris has been subjected to revisions in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. The third and latest revision was entrusted to a commission of three ecclesiastics, one of whom belonged to the Jansenist party, while another was Charles Coffin, then rector of the University of Paris, who did the greater part of the work of editing, altering, and tinkering. Under Coffin's manipulation, only twenty-one hymns of the earlier period were retained, and the number of those from the pens of comparatively modern French writers was largely increased. While all conversant with the subject will readily admit that both the Roman and the Parisian breviary contain some noble verses, English versions of which are to be found in the writings of Williams, Chandler, Mant, Caswell, and Newman, as also in hymns ancient and modern, the conviction is both general and well-founded that the principles and practice of liturgical revisionists have not been favorable to the interests of purity and simplicity in the case of ancient Latin hymnody. Coming now to the relation in which Latin hymnology stands to the movement and churches of the Reformation, it is to be noted that Luther showed his appreciation of what was good in the church of his childhood, when he rendered into the language of the fatherland sixteen old hymns, twelve of these being taken from the Latin, and the remaining four from the old German of the Middle Ages. In his Colloquia Mensalia, 
the sturdy Protestant is to be heard censuring Ambrose as a wordy poet, but extolling the Rex Christe Factor Omnium of Pope Gregory as the best hymn ever written. As with Luther, so with Melanchthon and Zwingli and their immediate followers. They published collections and translations of the old Latin hymns, and they continued the use of such compositions in their public worship to a limited extent, even after they had ceased to employ the Latin tongue in church services. It is well known, at least to Anglican clergymen, that the Church of England Book of Common Prayer contains certain canticles to be used on Sundays and weekdays. Thus, after the Old Testament lesson has been read, the rubric provides that there shall be said or sung in English the hymn called Te Deum Laudamus daily throughout the year. As an alternative to this great creed hymn of Western Christendom, there may be said or sung this canticle, Benedicite Omnia Opera, that is, the Song of the Three Children, a part of the Greek addition to the third chapter of Daniel, and a paraphrase or expansion of the 148th Psalm. Then, in the ordinal of the Church of England, which provides for the ordering of priests and the consecration of bishops, there is a stage at which there is to be sung or said, Veni Creator Spiritus. Of this hymn, two English metrical versions are given in the prayer book of 1662, that presently in use, an older and more diffuse rendering, and one more terse and spirited, the product of Bishop Cosin. But it may not be generally known that many of the earliest service books of the Continental and Scottish churches had hymns appended to the Psalms in meter, some of which were versions in the vernacular of old Latin compositions. The French Psalter, edited by Moreau in 1543, had the Ave Maria along with the Decalogue, the Belief, and the Lord's Prayer. The Dutch Psalter of 1640 had the Te Deum, as well as metrical renderings of the Decalogue, the Song of Zacharias, of Mary, of Simeon, and of Elizabeth. In the case of the Church of Scotland, the first edition of the Book of Common Order, published in 1564, gave only the Psalms, but the Bassentine version of the same book, published eleven years afterwards, contained five spiritual songs, that of 1587 gave ten, while some subsequent reprints have no fewer than fourteen. Among these, commonly used in the Kirk and private houses, will be found the Song of Simeon, called Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Blessed Marie, called Magnificat, and Veni Creator. The English of the last named is taken from the first prayer book of Edward the Sixth, published in 1549, and is the version of this old hymn which occurs in the form of ordering priests, the longer and older of the two renderings already referred to. How it has fared with Latin hymns in Protestant service books from Reformation times to the present day is too wide a field of inquiry to enter upon at the close of this brief introduction. This it is safe to affirm that no hymnal with any claim to completeness will be found to omit such sacred and classic pieces as Brief Life is Here Our Portion, Come Holy Ghost Our Souls Inspire, Jerusalem the Golden, Jesus the Very Thought of Thee, Jesus Thou Joy of Loving Hearts, O Come All Ye Faithful, O Jesus King Most Wonderful, and all these are translations or paraphrases of early Latin hymns. With the increase of interest in all that concerns the praise of God's children, which is so marked a feature of recent times, there has come an ever-growing appreciation of the grandeur and beauty, the spiritual depth and longing wistfulness that characterize the great body of Latin hymnology, and, as the result of this appreciation, the finest and sweetest products are finding a larger place in quarters from which, at no very far back point in time, they were altogether excluded. Of this we have a striking illustration in the contents of the most recent attempt to construct a hymnal for use in Presbyterian churches. In the draft hymnal prepared by a joint committee of the three leading denominations in Scotland, there are 557 hymns. Of these, five are confessedly translations from the Greek, and 26 from the Latin. With the Latin renderings, the names of Bishop Cosin, Dryden, Sir Walter Scott, Caswell, Chandler, Neal, and Ray Palmer stand honorably associated. End of section zero. Recording by Denise Nordell, Modesto, California. Section one of Hymns of Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording. By Sarah Holtz. Section one of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. D. Dibum Principe. By Charles Coffin, born at Arden in 1676, rector of the University of Paris, 1718, died 1749. 
The most of his hymns appeared in the Paris Breviary of 1736. In that service book, this is the hymn for Sunday at Martin's. 1. O day, the chief of days, whose light sprang from the dark embrace of night, on which our Lord from death's grim thrall arose true light to lighten all. 2. Death trembling heard the mighty Lord, and darkness quick obeyed his word. O oh, shame on us, our tardy will is slow his summons to fulfil. 3. While nature yet unconscious lies, come, let us, sons of light, arise, and cheerful raise our matin lay to chase the dark of night away. 4. While all the world around is still, come, and with songs the temple fill, taught by the saints of bygone days, whose words were song, whose songs were praise. 5. Loud trump of heaven, our languor shake, and bid our slumbering spirits wake. Teach us the nobler life, and give, O Christ, the needed grace to live. 6. O font of love, our steps attend, those needed gifts and mercy send. And where thy word is heard this day, give thou the Spirit's power, we pray. 7. To Father and to Son be praise, to thee, O Holy Ghost, always, whose presence still the heart inspires with sacred light and glowing fires. End of section 1. D. Dirum Principe. Recording by Sarah Holt. Section 2 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sarah Holtz. Section 2 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. O oh, not her looks, de lumine. The oldest text known of this hymn is from a 10th century manuscript. It is in the Serum Breviary, 1495, also in that of Aberdeen, 1509, which is substantially that of Serum, and one of the very few surviving service books of the pre-Reformation period in Scotland. 1. O light, that from the light wast born, Redeemer of the world forlorn, in mercy now the suppliant spare, our praise accept, and hear our prayer. 2. Thou, who didst wear our flesh below, to save our souls from endless woe, of thy blessed body, Lord, would we efficient members ever be. 3. More bright than sun thine aspect gleamed, a snowdrift white thy garments seemed, when on the mount thy glory shone, to faithful witnesses alone. 4. There did the seers of all confer with those who thy disciples were, and thou on both to shed abroad the glory of the eternal God. 5. From heaven the Father's voice was heard, that thee the eternal Son declared. And faithful hearts now love to own, thy glory, King of heaven, alone. 6. Grant us, we pray, to walk in light, clad in thy virtues sparkling bright, that, upward borne by deeds of love, our souls may win the bliss above. 7. Loud praise to thee our homage brings, Eternal God, thou King of kings, Who reignest one, thou one in three, From age to age, eternally. End of section 2 O not to looks, de lumine.
Recording by Sarah Holt. Section 3 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 3 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Tu Trinitatis Unitas Attributed by some, but with a small degree of probability, to Gregory the Great, the hymn occurs in all the editions of the Roman Breviary, as also in the Serum, York, and Aberdeen Breviaries. 1. O Thou Eternal One in Three, Dread Ruler of the Earth and Sky, Accept the praise we yield to Thee, Who, waking, lift our songs on high. 2. Now from the couch of rest we rise, while solemn night in silence reigns, and lift to thee our earnest cries, to give thy balm to heal our pains. 3. If in the night by Satan's guile our souls were lured by thought of sin, O bid thy light celestial smile, and chase away the night within. 4. Purge thou our flesh from every stain. Let not dull sloth our hearts depress, nor let the sense of guilt remain to chill the warmth our souls possess. 5. To thee, Redeemer blessed, we pray that in our souls thy light may shine, so we shall walk from day to day unerring in thy way divine. Six. Grant it, O Father, in thy love, Grant it, O one begotten Son, Who, with the Spirit, reign above, Now and while endless ages run. End of section three. Tu Trinitatis Unitas. Section 4 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 4 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Sunday Evening Deus Creator Omnium By St. Ambrose Born at Lyon, Arles, or Treves in 340. Consecrated Bishop of Milan in 374. Died on Easter Eve 397. He introduced antiphonal chanting to the Western Church and laid the foundation of church music, which Gregory systemized. 1. Thy works, O God, thy name extol. Thou ruler of the worlds that roll. The day is clad in garments bright, And grateful sleep pervades the night. 2. That weary limbs from labor free By rest for toil prepared may be, And jaded minds a while forget The anxious thoughts that pain and fret. 3. Fast fades the sunlight in the west, Thy hand we own, our day hath blessed. Now from the accuser's power we flee, And lift our prayers in song to thee. 4. O thou hast stirred our hearts to sing, Hast tuned the praise our voices bring. From earth's vain loves our love hast won, Hast lured our thoughts that heavenward run. 5. So when the rayless gloom of night Hath quenched in dark the expiring light, Faith waves the ebon clouds away, And dark is light, and night is day. 6. That sin may ne'er an entrance make, 
may slumber ne'er our souls o'ertake. Faith, wakeful, keeps the soul secure, and sleep is sweet and deep and pure. 7. The mind from sin's enticements free, O oh, let our dreams be thoughts of thee, And by no envious foe oppressed, Vouchsafe to thy beloved rest. End of section 4 Deus Creator Omnium Section 5 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 5 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee O Deus ego amo te, nec amo te. Ut salves me. Attributed to Francis Xavier, born at the Castle Xavier, near Pampeluna, Spain, in 1506. Graduated at the Paris University, where he became acquainted with Ignatius Loyola. As a Jesuit missionary visited India, Travancore, Ceylon, Malacca, and Japan. Died when near Canton in 1552. The original of this hymn is supposed to be a Spanish sonnet. All that can be said of the Latin version is that it is probably by Xavier, or by some German Jesuit, and is at least as early as 1668. 1. O God, I love Thee not alone because Thou savest me, and those who love not in return are lost eternally. 2. Thou art mine own, O Christ. Thine arms embraced me on the cross. Thou didst endure the nails, the spear, the bitter shame and loss. 3. O sorrows numberless were thine, and all were born for me. The bloody sweat, the cruel death of bitter agony. 4. Why, therefore, should I love thee now, O Jesus ever blessed? Not lest in hell my soul be cast, Not that in heaven it rest. 5. No other hope my love inspires And wins my heart for thee. I only love thee, Christ my King, Because thou lovest me. End of section 5 O Deus, ego amo te, nec amo te, ut salves me. Section 6 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 6 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Lucas Creator Optime By Gregory, surnamed the Great, born at Rome about 540. Succeeded Pelagius in the papal chair, 590, St. Augustine on a mission to Britain in 596, died in 614. He ranks among the four Latin doctors, and because of the services he rendered to the ritual of the church, he was styled Magister Caramoniarum. The Gregorian tones, or chants, are the fruit of his study of sacred music. 1. Thou blessed Creator of the light, from whom the day its splendor brings, Thy word the earth to beauty woke, when light came forth on glowing wings. 2. The circle of the day is thine, the morn and night in one are bound. O oh, hear our earnest prayer, as now the gloomy shades are gathering round. 3. O oh, free our souls from guilty stains, that we thy favor still may know, and let no thought the mind possess to bind the heart to earth below. 4. 
that we may beat at heaven's fair gate, where safely stored our treasure lies. Purge us from every filthy stain. Teach us all evil to despise. 5. Hear us, O Holy Father, hear, and Thou the everlasting Son, who with the Holy Spirit reignst while the eternal ages run. End of section 6. Lucis Creator Optime. Section 7 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mickey. Section 7 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Aurora Yam Spargit Polum. Placed by Duffield in a class which contains hymns formerly called Ambrosian, but now known to be the work of other hands. George Cassander, the liberal Catholic collector in 1556, writes Incognitus Octor after the hymn, which has a place in several old hymnaria such as the Durham, the Cottonian, and the Harleian. Now daylight floods the morning sky, and earthward glides the approaching day. The dancing rays of sunlight chase the gathered fears of night away. Hence dreams that cloud the soil, away, ye terrors grim of midnight born. Whatever the dark of night hath bred, die in the light that greets the morn. So when the day eternal breaks, that day for which our spirits long, its light may fall to bless our souls, even while we raise our morning song. To God the Father throat in heaven, to Christ the one begotten Son, and to the Holy Ghost be praise, now and while endless ages run. End of section 7. Aurora Yam Spargit Polum. Section 8 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mickey. Section 8 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Yesu Jolchus Memoria. Generally, and there seems little reason to doubt correctly, ascribed to Bernard of Clairvaux. Born in 1091 at his father's castle near Dijon in Burgundy, died 1153. The monk of Citeaux, the first abbot of Clairvaux, the papal controversialist and the preacher of the Second Crusade, is better known in our day as the author of a hymn regarded by many as the sweetest and most evangelical in medieval hymnody. The palm from which the hymn is taken consists of nearly fifty quatrains on the name of Jesus, known as the joyful rhythm of St. Bernard. In the Roman breviary, Three hymns are taken from the rhythm, Yesu Dulcis Memoria, Yesu Rex Admiri Baris, and Yesu Decis Angelicum. O oh, Jesus, when I think of thee, true gladness fills my heart, but joy unspeakable twill be to see thee as thou art. O oh, blessed name, no note more sweet, no music so divine, its charms the dearest fancies greet that with my memory twine. To those who come with sin confessed, thy name their hope inspires, and every needy soul is blessed and granted all desires. To those who seek, ah, thou art found far more than all desire, a living fountain whose streams abound, a flame of heavenly fire. What tongue can e'er the charm express, what words its beauty show? For thy dear name's sweet loveliness no heart can ever know who only taste the heavenly bread, they hunger for the feast, who drink of Christ the fountainhead, but find their thirst increase. O oh, Jesus, to my fainting heart, when wilt thou come to speak? O oh, when to me thy bliss impart, and more than I can seek. O oh, I will feed in hunger still, O oh, I will drink and pine, till thou my famished spirit fill with that blessed name of thine. End of section 8. Yesu Dolces Memoria. Section 9 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mickey. Section 9 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. 
O Deus, ego amo te, dam prior tu amasti me. Credited by many to the composer of the hymn which opens with identically the same line, but proceeds quite differently. It is, however, doubtful if this is the composition of Xavier. More probably, it is the breathing of desire on the part of some now unknown German Jesuit of the 17th century. My heart goes forth in love to thee, O God, who first hast loved me. My freedom, lo, I lay aside, thy willing slave, whate'er betide. May memory ne'er a thought suggest that comes not forth at thy behest. And may the mind no wisdom know that God all wise doth not bestow. May nothing be desired by me save what I know is willed by thee, and what of thine I e'er attain I render back to thee again. Take what thou gavest, all is thine, dispose as suits thy will divine. Rule, lover of my soul, I rest in thy blessed will who knowest best. That I may love thee as I will, O oh, let thy love my bosom fail. This gift alone endureth I, all else are dreams that flit away. End of section 9 O Deus, ego amo te, nam prior tu amasti me. Section 10 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mickey. Section 10 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Te Lucius Ante Terminum. Sometimes ascribed to St. Ambrose, it is found in 11th century hymnaria of the English Church and in the breviaries of Rome, Paris, Sarum, York, and Aberdeen, generally as a hymn at Compline. Maker of the world, we pray, ere the dark of night surrounds us, let thy love beside us stay, throw protecting arms around us. Phantoms of the night, away! Let no evil dream affect us. Pure as falls the light of day, from the taint of sin protect us. Hear us, Father, when we cry, hear us, Christ, thy grace extending, hear us, Spirit, throned on high, three and one, through years unending. End of section 10 Section 11 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Section 11 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Yam Meta Noctis Transit. This morning hymn is one of four attributed to St. Hilary. Born at Poitiers early in the 4th century, became bishop of his native town about 350, died 13th January 368. His Saint's Day, which gives name to Hilary term in English law courts, is celebrated on 14th January in order not to trench upon the octave of the Epiphany. 1. Gone are the shades of night, the hours of rest are o'er. New beauties sparkle bright, and heaven is light once more. 2. To thee our prayers shall speed, O Lord of light divine. Come to our utmost need, and in our darkness shine. 3. Spirit of love and light, may we thine image know, and in thy glory bright, to full perfection grow. 4. Hear us, O Father blessed, hear us, O Christ the Son, and Comforter the best, now and till life is done. End of section 11. Yam Meta Noctis Transit. Section 12 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Section 12 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Labente Yam Solis Rota. By Charles Coffin. See page 3. Chandler's translation beginning, and now the sun's declining rays, is for ninth hour, or three in the afternoon, of Sunday. In hymns, ancient and modern, Chandler's rendering is given as an evening hymn, and with considerable alterations, the first line being, as now the sun's declining rays.
Number 12. 1. Now sinks the glowing orb of day, and silent night comes on apace, so gains our life the appointed goal that marks the limit of our race. 2. O Christ uplifted on the cross, thine arms were stretched towards the sky, grant us with love that cross to seek, and folded in those arms to die. 3. Now to the Father throned on high, and unto Christ his only Son, and to the Spirit glory be, now and while endless ages run. End of section 12. Labente Yam Solis Rota. Section 13 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 13 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Splendor Paterne Gloriae This morning hymn is the complement of Eterne Rerum Conditor, and like it almost indisputably by St. Ambrose. Its use was generally for matins or lauds on Monday. By some monastic orders it was used daily. From the Father's throne descending, light from out the realms of light, font of light, all light transcending, brighter day in day most bright. Shine, true light, in radiant brightness, flashing forth perpetual ray, may thy Spirit's searching lightness fill our souls with endless day. Father, come we humbly bending, Father of almighty grace, who hast glory never ending, banish every sinful trace. When to do thy will inclining, quell for us the tempter's wrath, ne'er in trials our repining, lead us in the upward path. May thy rule our minds enlighten, let no sin our lives defile, fervent faith our spirits brighten, knowing naught of fraud or guile. Christ, the bread of life bestowing, faith our daily cup shall fill. Draughts of joy forever flowing, drink we from the Spirit's rill. Thus our life in beauty gliding, purity like dawn of day, faith like sun at noon abiding, eve that knows no twilight gray. Forth in beauty rides the morning, be thy glory on us poured, sun the Father's love adorning, Father in the eternal word. End of section 13 Splendor Paterne Gloriae Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 14 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 14 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Salvator Mundi, Domine Author unknown, found in the Hymnaria of Sarum and York, also in the Sarum, York, Hereford, and Aberdeen Breviaries, used at Eton in Latin original at evening service until about 1830. Thou who hast led our steps this day, blessed Saviour of the world, we pray, through all the night thy care extend, and save us to our journey's end. Be present with us, Lord, who wait, and lift our cry at mercy's gate, take all our load of sin away, and change our darkness into day. Free thou our minds from careless sleep, our souls from sin's allurements keep, and may our flesh from every stain all pure, we pray thee, still remain. To thee of purity the spring, our prayers ascend on soaring wing. Hear thou our cry, and with the morn, may purity our souls adorn. Glory be unto God always, to Christ the Son eternal praise. Glory to God the Spirit be, from age to age eternally. End of section 14 Salvatore Mundi Domine Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America
Section 15 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 15 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Christe, Lumen Perpetuum. By Magnus Felix Enodius. Born at Arles about 473 became bishop of Pavia about 514, died 521, buried on 17th July of that year, which day is observed as his festival by the Roman Church. Christ, the light that shines eternal, light that gilds the rolling spheres, dawn upon our night and keep us pure as light when day appears. Let no gin of Satan snare us, let no enemy oppress. Wakeful eye, with garments spotless, may we walk life's wilderness. Keep our hearts in thy safe keeping, be thy flock thy special care, in thy fold in mercy tend them, guard their footsteps everywhere. And our souls shall sing triumphant when thy light our eyes shall see, and the vows we owe are rendered, God the great triune to thee. End of section 15 Christe Lumen Perpetuum Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 16 of Hymns of the Holy Church This is a Ripple Fox recording. All Ripple Fox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit ripplefox.org Recording by Glenn O'Brien www.glenobrand.net Section 16 of Hymns of the Holy Church by John Brownlee Noxata Lenorum Contagiot This hymn is crossed by Duffield and the Aaron Abrosian, with recruits compositions of Gregory and other authors. Monet gives this probably by St. Gregory. 1. Dark night has drawn a curtain round, in it earth's hues in gloom profound, the contrite at thy feet we fall, and make request thou judge of all. 2. If thou wouldst hide the girl of sin, and through we purge of hearts within, O Christ, dispense thy grace, we pray, to keep us guiltless day by day. 3. The awakened conscience, so oppressed, by thought of sin all unconfessed, yearns in the groom to cast a load, at thy breast feet redeemer God. 4. Dispel the darkness, Lord, we pray, that in our mind holds dismal sway. Send forth thy light and bid us rest, in thy calm peace forever blessed. End of section 16. Nos atra aerum contagit. Section 17 of Hymns of the Holy Church. This is the Weber Foster Coin. A Weber Foster Coin is in the public domain. For more information on the volunteer, this is the Weber Foster Law. The coin by Grand O'Brien. www.railbrand.net. Section 17 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Yam Yorush's Hotel Sidere. Fearing to ask great Ambrose, Bernardo's Benedictine Editors. A rendering offered by Dr. Neil is one of the morning hymns in Hymns Ancient and Modern. Now that the daylight fills the sky, number four, but the rendering has been considerably halted by the editors. One. Seek in the east the morning wise. Seek winged prayer the growing skies. Bring help from heaven that all our way be present to our God this day. Two. May he restrain from words of sin. For bitter strife, give calm within. Fell from our eyes the garish light that lures the soul to darkest night. 3. Pure may our inmost heart remain from evil thoughts and fancies vain, and may the curb our fresh control that drags to earth the aspiring soul. 4. So when the last stray beams of light shall fade before the return of night, Kept in the path our feet have trod, we shall give glory to our God. 5. To God the Father, throned in heaven, to Christ the one begotten Son, and to the Holy Ghost be praised, now, 
and while endless ages remain. End of section 17. Yamuruchi's Auto Sedere. Section 18 of Imps of the Hurry Church. This is the Ripple Foster Coin. All Ripple Foster Coins are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit the RippleFox.org. Recording by Glenn O'Brien. www.glennoebrien.net. Section 18 of Films of Early Church by John Brownlee. Young Son of Jared Agnes. A week cast all those beatitude trinitus, while the twelve ends of Byzantine editors regard as undoubtedly the work of St. Ambrose, in which all the breathy hours were Susan's vespers on Sunday. 1. Now sinks the fiery orb of day, or one in three eternal light, or three one forever bright, shine our darkened minds, we pray. 2. When morning breaks, our songs we raise, when evening falls, we still adore, when morn and eve shall come no more, in mercy grant us still to praise. 3. All praises to the Father be, all praise to the Eternal Son, and to the Spirit free in one, from age to age eternally. End of section 18. Yom Sol Rejeted Section 19. Of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Wooly B. WoollyBee.blog.com Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Advent, Christ Day, Praecomer, Annue 1. To thee, O Christ, our prayers shall rise With tears of sorrow blending. Come for our help, thou Holy One, on our dark night descending. 2. Our hearts shall find their rest in thee, and e'en in dreams shall praise thee, and with each rising of the sun, anew their songs shall raise thee. 3. Impart a noble life, and may our spirit's warmth be heightened. Midnight depart, and with thy love, O oh, may our lives be brightened. 4. In hymns we pay our vows to thee, at vesper hour we pray. Erase the writing we have made, thine own let stand for I. End of section 19. Advent, Christ Day, Praecomer, Annue. Recording by Wooly B. Woollybee.blog.com Section 20 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Wooly B. WoollyBee.blog.com. Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Advent. Inoctus on Broad Daisy Days. 1. When evening shades around us close, and bound in sleep our limbs repose, the watchful soul from slumber free shall breathe its earnest prayer to thee. 2. Desire of nations, word of God, thou saviour of the world abroad, hear thou our mournful prayer at length, and raise the fallen by thy strength. 3. Be near, Redeemer, by thy grace, forgive our erring sinful race. Bound in the prison house of sin, O oh, open heaven and lead us in. 4. O thou who camest to set us free, to thee the Son all praises be, to Father, Spirit, three in one, while the eternal ages run. End of section 20. Advent. Inoctus on broad daisy days. Recording by Wooly B. Wollybee.blog.com Section 21 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit 
LibriVox.org. Recording by Wooly B. Section 21 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Advent. Veni, Veni, Emmanuel. An antiphon. The term denotes a short versicle said at the beginning and close of a psalm or psalms in the breviary offices. This antiphon is by an unknown author, Dr. Neal, who supposes it to be of 12th century date, published a translation of it in 1851, beginning Draw Nigh, Draw Nigh, Emmanuel, an altered version of which occurs in Hymns Ancient and Modern as an Advent Hymn, with first line altered to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 36. 1. Emmanuel, come, we call for thee, come set thy captive Israel free, who sore at heart in exile wait, their absent Lord, who tarries late. Joy, joy, Emmanuel, shall be born for thee, O Israel, forlorn. 2. Come, root of Jesse, for our foes in cruel snare our souls enclose. Bring us, we pray, from hell's dark cave, from gulf profound thy people save. Joy, joy, etc. 3. Come, come, O harbinger of day, cheer thou our hearts with heavenly ray, dispel the clouds of night that roll, the dark of death that fills the soul. Joy, joy, etc. 4. Come, key of David, in thy might, unlock for us the realms of light. Make safe the path that upward tends. Close thou the way that downward wends. Joy, joy, etc. 5. Come, come, O thou almighty Lord, from Sinai. Once went forth thy word, when in the midst of eddying flame, thou didst thy law in might proclaim. Joy, joy, etc. End of section 21. Veni, Veni, Emmanuel. Recording by Wooly B. Section 22 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Wooly B. Section 22 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Section 22. Nato Nobis Salvatore. By Adam of St. Victor, a native of either Britain or Brittany, probably the latter, educated at Paris, became about 1130 a monk in the Abbey of St. Victor, then in the suburbs, afterwards absorbed in the city of Paris. There he passed the remainder of his life and died somewhere between the years 1172 and 1192. In liturgical services, the gradual, or antiphon, sung between the epistle and gospel, ended on festival days with the word Alleluia. The final syllable of this vocable was prolonged in a number of musical notes called sequentia, and by the ninth century it became common to adapt words to these notes, which words are now called sequences. Adam of St. Victor was one of the most voluminous composers of this kind of sacred Latin verse. 1. Let us tune our hearts and voices, all creation wide rejoices, for a Savior has been born, given to man his weakness wearing, dwelling with the sad despairing, light and health our life adorn. 2. From the midst of Eden's gladness came the dower of death and sadness, but the Savior's life is ours, banished now our death and sorrow, life and joy from Christ we borrow more dwelt in Eden's bowers. 3. From the height of heaven above us, God looked down on earth to love us, and he sent his only Son. Now no more, his face concealing, bridegroom-like, his grace revealing, came he forth, his work begun. 4. Swift and strong, a giant glorious, o'er our death he came victorious, girt with power his course to run. Came he forth, salvation willing, law and prophecy fulfilling, Till the task assayed is done. 5. Jesus, who hast brought salvation, healing balm for every nation, Thou our glory art in peace, praise thy glorious deeds shall mention, Who in humble condescension camest to thy servants to release. End of section 22. Nato Nobis Salvatore. Recording by Wooly B.
Section 23 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Wooly B. Section 23 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Where not us in Bethlehem? The oldest form of this Christmas carol is found in a Benedictine processional belonging to the beginning of the 14th century. 1. Zion is glad this glorious morn. A babe in Bethlehem is born. 2. See where he lies in manger low, whose kingly reign no end shall know. 3. The ox and ass that filled the stall knew that the babe was lord of all. 4. Out from the east the sages bring their treasures for an offering. 5. They humbly seek the lowly place and worship there the king of grace. 6. The Son of God who made the earth, a virgin mother gave him birth. 7. No poison from the serpent stains the human blood that fills his veins. 8. And though our flesh he meekly wears, no mark of sin his nature bears. 9. That he might man to God restore and give the grace that once he wore. 10. Come while our hearts are full of mirth and bless the Lord of lowly birth. 11. The Holy Trinity will praise and give our thanks to God always. End of section 23. Where not us in Bethlehem. Section 24 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 24 of Hymns of the Early Church. By John Brownlee. Heo, quid yace stabulo, omnium creator. By Jean Monboire, with Johannes Malburnus for the Latin, and John Malburn for the English form of his name. Born in 1460 at Brussels, a canon regular of the Brethren of the Common Life in the Low Countries, died abbot of the cloister of Livry, not far from Paris, in 1502 or 1503. In his large work, The Spiritual Rose Garden, there is a rosary on the birth of Christ, consisting of thirteen stanzas, which commence, Ea, mea anima, Bethlehem eamus. The hymn beginning as above consists of three stanzas taken from that poem. The detached stanzas passed into many of the older German hymn books, met with great favor in the early Reformed churches, so long as the practice of singing Latin compositions survived among them, and still retain a place in some German hymnals in an old translation, with for opening line, Warum liegt in Krippelein. Loquitor peccator. Wherefore in the lowly stall, O thou great Creator, dost thou raise thine infant call, glorious renovator? Where thy purple if a king? Where the shouts thy subjects bring? Where thy royal castle? Here is want with all her retrain. Poverty proclaims her reign. These thy court and vassal. Jesus respondit. Hither, by my love impelled, have I come to save thee. Sin has long thy nature held, powerful to enslave thee. By my emptiness and woe, by the grace that I bestow, do I seek to fill thee. By my humble lowly birth, by this sacrifice on earth, blessing great I will thee. Laudant Fidelis Songs of praise, ten thousand songs, sing I will and laud thee, for such grace my spirit longs ever to applaud thee. Glory, glory let there be, lover of mankind to thee, in the heaven supernal. Let this testimony fly over earth and sea and sky, borne by songs eternal. End of section 24 Heo quid yase stabulo, omnium creator. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 25 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 25 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Quicumque Christum Queritis. 
This hymn for the Epiphany forms part of a larger one of very complex authorship, known as A Solis Ortus Cardine, et Usque Terre Limitem. This portion of that Christmas hymn has by some been assigned to St. Ambrose, but by a majority of judges to Prudentius, the Horace and Virgil of the Christians, in the estimate of the scholarly Bentley. Aurelius Prudentius, Clemens, or the Merciful, was born in 348, somewhere in the north of Spain. After filling various secular offices he retired, in his fifty-seventh year, into private life, and devoted himself to the composition of sacred verse. He died circa 413, but where we are not told. O ye who seek the Lord, come nigh, to heaven uplift your reverent eyes, the royal banner of our God is blazoned on the midnight skies. Brighter than when the sun at noon pours forth its radiance on the earth, see yonder star its glory sheds, and tells to man the Saviour's birth. O wisdom seeks the lowly stall, and takes the guidance of the star, to worship where the incarnate lies, and offer gifts from lands afar. With incense worships the divine, with gold a kingly tribute pays, and at the feet of God made man the myrrh in sweet profusion lays. O Bethlehem, city ever blessed, what honor more could come to thee, the cradle of the incarnate God, who came to set his Israel free? O Jesus, to the world revealed, to thee let glory ever be, to Father and to Holy Ghost, from age to age eternally. End of section 25 Quicumque Christum Queritis Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 26 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carol Box in Surrey, England. Section 26 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Jesu Nostra Redemptio. Probably the 7th or 8th century. Found in three manuscripts of the 11th century in the British Museum Library. Also in the Old Roman, Sarum, York, and Aberdeen Breviaries. Chandler's rendering of this fine hymn. O Christ, our hope, our heart's desire, and which is to be found in most collections, is the hymn for evensong on Ascension Day in that author's Hymns of the Primitive Church. Jesu Nostra Redemptio Thou our Redeemer art, O Christ, our heart's desire, our fervent love, creator of the worlds, thou camest to wear our flesh from heaven above. T'was love that brought thee to our aid, To bear the burden of our woe, To bow the head in shameful death, And life, immortal life, bestow. Asunder burst the bands of hell, The captives hailed the glorious day, And by thy mighty triumph crowned, Thou art at God's right hand for I. O oh, may thy mercy still abound, That, by the goodness of thy grace, we daily o'er our sin may rise, And see the beauty of thy face. Spring of our joy, be thou, O Christ, Our great reward hereafter be, And while the endless ages run, Our praises shall be all of thee. End of section 26 Jesu Nostra Redemptio Section 27 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carol Box in Surrey, England. Section 27 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee A. Canamus Gloriam now let us tune our hearts to sing the glory of the Almighty King. His hand unrolled the spacious skies, whose beauty lures our wondering eyes. There are the clouds with treasure, rare, 
slow floating in the higher air, whence come the soft refreshing showers, to bless the springing of the flowers. Rich is the treasure of thy grace, prepared for us who seek thy face, it falls from clouds that earth would roll, and penetrates the inmost soul. And faithful hearts that thirsting pine, drink deeply of the draught divine, and with an heavenly impulse rise, to greet the sunlight in the skies. O happy souls that evermore drink of the bliss thou hast in store, may grateful love responsive flow to all the love thou dost bestow. Now glory to the three in one, to God the Father, God the Son, and to the Spirit one in three, from age to age eternally. End of section 27 A. E. Canimus Gloriam Section 28 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carol Box in Surrey, England. Section 28 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Deus Homo Rex Caelorum by Bishop Marbodus, born in Anjou, 1035, successfully Archdeacon of Angers, and Bishop of Rennes, died in 1125, was author of a poem, De Gemis, which gives a mystical explanation of precious stones much in favour in the Middle Ages. King of heaven, our nature wearing, pity lend the sad despairing, neath the sway of sin repining, formed from dust to dust declining, tottering in our ruined state, strengthened by thy goodness great. What is man from sin descending, child of death, all woes attending? What is man, a worm that clingeth to the earth from which he springeth? Wilt thou forth thine anger bring on a weak, defenceless thing? Shall not man who earthward tendeth Look to God, who mercy sendeth, T'were a task most unbefitting, God o'er man in judgment sitting, Yet should God in judgment speak, Where shall man an answer seek? As the shadow quickly flying, Faint our life and sure our dying, As the cloud by tempest driven, As the grass cut down at even, King of heaven, in mercy great, Pity the disconsolate. End of section 28. Deus Homo Rex Caelorum. Section 29 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Section 29 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Vexilla Regis Prodeunt By Venantius Fortunatus Born in the district of Treviso, Italy, about 530. In 565 he made a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Martin at Tours and spent the remainder of his years in Gaul. Through the influence of his friend, Queen Radegunda, Fortunatus became Bishop of Poitiers in 597. Some place his death in the year 609. Fortunatus must have been an author of great industry and versatility. He wrote The Life of St. Martin in four books, containing 2,245 hexameter lines. He threw off in profusion Ver de Sassate when wandering from castle to cloister in Gaul, and he composed a volume of hymns for all the festivals of the Christian year, which is now unhappily lost. This is his best-known hymn, Dr. Neal's translation of which is inserted for the fifth Sunday in Lent, otherwise called Palm Sunday, in Hymns, Ancient and Modern, number 84. 1. See the royal banners wave across the sky. Bright the mystic radiance, for the cross is nigh. And he who came our flesh to wear, the Christ of God was wounded there. 2. Deep the cruel spear thrust by the soldier given. Blood and water mingle where the flesh is riven. To cleanse our souls the crimson tide leapt from the Saviour's riven side. 3. 
in the distant ages zion's harp was strung and the faithful saw him while the prophet sung now israel's hope the nations see for christ is reigning from the tree four tree of wondrous beauty tree of grace and light royal throne to rest on decked with purple bright the choice of god this royal throne whence christ the king should rule his own five see the branches drooping laden see they sway for the price of heaven on those branches lay ah great the price the price was paid by him on whom the debt was laid end of section twenty nine Section 30 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Section 30 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Pange lingua gloriosi prelium certaminis. This, one of the first of the Latin medieval hymns, has been credited to St. Hilary. It has also been ascribed to Claudianus Mamertus, who died in 474. But by the majority of authorities, it is regarded as the composition of Fortunatus, and ranks next to the Vexilla Regis Prudeunt in their estimate. A rendering of it by Kebel will be found in his miscellaneous poems, beginning Sing My Tongue of Glorious Warfare, which is Dr. Neal's Sing My Tongue the Glorious Battle, in a somewhat altered form. 1. Tell my tongue the glorious conflict, crowned with victory nobly won, more than all the spoil of battle, praise the triumph of God's Son, how by death the crown of conquest graced him when the strife was done. 2. Grieving sore o'er Eden sorrow, when our race in Adam fell, and the fatal fruit he tasted, welcomed sin and death and hell, God ordained a tree in Zion, Eden's poison to dispel. 3. In the work of our redemption wisdom met the tempter's foils, on the ground he claimed the victor, fought and bore away the spoils, and the bane became the blessing, freedom sprang amid his toils. 4. From the bosom of the Father, where he shared the regal crown, at the time by God appointed came the world's creator down, God incarnate, born of virgin, shorn of glory and renown. 5. List the voice of infant weeping, cradled where the oxen stand, and the virgin mother watches, tending him with loving hand, hands and feet of God she bindeth, folding them in swaddling band. 6. Blessing, blessing everlasting to the glorious Trinity, to the Father, Son, and Spirit, equal glory let there be. Universal praise be given to the blessed one in three. End of section 30. Section 31 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Section 31 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Lustra sexquiam perigit. By some attributed to St. Ambrose, but generally and with greater probability to Fortunatus. There is an imitation of this hymn in English by Bishop Mant, beginning, See the Destined Day Arise, one of the Passion Hymns in Hymns Ancient and Modern, number 99. 1. Thirty years by God appointed, and there dawns the woeful day, when the great Redeemer girds him for the tumult of the fray, and upon the cross uplifted bears our load of guilt away. 2. Ah, tis bitter gall he drinketh when his heart in anguish fails, from the thorns his life-blood trickles, from the spear wound and the nails, but that crimson stream for cleansing o'er creation wide prevails. 3. Faithful cross, in all the woodland, standeth not a nobler tree. In thy leaf, and flower, and fruitage, none can e'er thy equal be. Sweet the wood, and sweet the iron, sweet the load that hung on thee. 4. Noble tree, unbend thy branches, let thy stubborn fibers bend. Cast thy native rigor from thee, be a gentle, loving friend. 
bear him in thine arms and softly christ the king eternal tend five only thou couldst bear the burden of the ransom of our race only thou couldst be of refuge like the ark a hiding place by the sacred blood anointed of the covenant of grace six blessing blessing everlasting to the glorious trinity to the father son and spirit equal glory let there be universal praise be given to the blessed one in three end of section thirty one section thirty two of hymns of the early church this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Section 32 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Crux Ave Benedicta. This little poem, which he pronounces perfect in its kind, is taken by Trench from Daniel's Thesaurus without any note of author or of date. 1. Hail, thou blessed cross, all hail, death no longer can prevail. On those arms extended high did my King and Saviour die. 2. Queen of all the trees that grow, medicine when health is low, solace to the cumbered heart, comfort thou when sorrows smart. 3. O most sacred wood, the sign that eternal life is mine, on the fruit thy branches give, feeds the human heart to live. 4. When around the judgment seat friends of thine and foes shall meet, be my prayer, O Christ, to thee, and in love remember me. End of section 32. Section 33 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 33 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Ore de Passione Domine Nobis Jesu Christe From a 14th century manuscript, where it bears the title, Hours of the Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, compiled from the Prophets and the New Testament by the Blessed Pope Urban, born 1302, died 1370. End of Section 33 Ore de Passione Domine Nobis Jesu Christi. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 34 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 34 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Ad primam Tu qui velatus facie Veiled was the glory of thy face, O Jesus, Lord of heavenly grace, when mocking knees were bent in scorn, and bitter stripes were meekly borne. 2. To thee the prayer of faith we send, in thee we hope, O Lord, attend, and in thy mercy lead the way to where thy glory shines as day. 3. To thee be highest honors paid, O Christ, who wast by man betrayed, who on the cross of anguish sore didst die, that we might die no more. End of section 34. Tu qui velatus facie. Recording by Eric Metzler. Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 35 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 35 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Ora qui ductus tertia. Ad tertiam. Ora qui ductus tertia. 4. O Christ, who in that hour of dread forth as a sacrifice wast led, 
who, to retrieve our grievous loss, didst bear the burden of the cross. 5. O may thy love our hearts inflame, be thy pure life our constant aim, that we may win the heavenly rest, and share the glories of the blest. 6. To thee be highest honors paid, O Christ, who wast by man betrayed, who on the cross of anguish sore didst die, that we might die no more. End of section 35 Ora qui ductus tercia Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 36 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 36 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Ad Sextum Crucem pro nobis subiit 7. For us the cruel cross he bare, Endured the thirst while hanging there, O Jesus, Thou hast anguish borne, Thy hands and feet with nails were torn. 8. Honor and blessing be to Thee, O Christ, who hung upon the tree, Who by the offering of Thy grace Didst save from death our fallen race. End of section 36 Crucem pro nobis subiit Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico United States of America Section 37 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 37 of Hymns of the Early Church Ad Nonum Beata Christi Passio 9 Thy blessed passion, Christ, be ours, to set us free from Satan's powers, to aid our fainting souls to rise to joys prepared in paradise. 10. To Christ the Lord all glory be, who, hanging on the shameful tree, gave up his life with bitter cry, and saved a world prepared to die. 11. To thee be highest honors paid, O Christ, who wast by man betrayed, who, on the cross of anguish sore, didst die, that we might die no more. End of section 37 Beata Christi Passio Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 38 of Hymns of the Early Church this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 38 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Ad Completorium Qui Iacuisti Mortuus 12. O spotless King, who shared its gloom, and lay at peace within the tomb, Teach us to find our rest in Thee, and sing Thy praise eternally. 13. Come to our help, O Lord, who gave Thy precious blood our souls to save. Lead us to Thine eternal peace, whose sweetest joys shall never cease. End of section 38. Qui Iacuisti Mortuus Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico United States of America Section 39 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 39 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Finita Yam Sunt Praelia Of unknown date and authorship, it has not been traced further back than the Hymnodia Sacra, Munster, 1753. 1. Alleluia! Alleluia! 
The din of battle now is dead, And glory crowns the victor's head. Let mirth abound, and songs resound. Alleluia. 2. Alleluia, alleluia, The bitter pangs of death are past, And Christ hath vanquished hell at last. Cheers are ringing, psalms are singing. Alleluia. 3. Alleluia, alleluia, And when the morn appointed broke, All decked with beauty Christ awoke, O oh, shout with glee, sing merrily, Alleluia. 4. Alleluia, Alleluia, Hell hath he closed with his own hand, The gates of heaven wide open stand, Let mirth abound and songs resound, Alleluia. 5. Alleluia, Alleluia, Tis thy wounds, O blessed Jesus, Tis thy death from dying frees us, That living we may sing with glee. Alleluia. End of section 39 Finita Yam Sunt Prailia Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 40 of Hymns of the Early Church this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 40 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Plaudite Celi A Jesuit hymn taken by Walroth in 1806 out of the Psalteriolum Cantiorum Catholicarum a Patribus Societate Jesu. 1. Shout praises, ye heavens, and sigh them, soft air, from highest to lowest, sing, sing everywhere, for black clouds of tempest are banished from sight, and spring, crowned with glory, is pouring her light. 2. Come forth with the springtime, sweet flowerets, and spread your rich hues around us, where nature lay dead. Come, violets modest, and roses so gay, with lilies and marigolds spangle the way. 3. Flow joy song in fullness, flow higher and higher, pour forth thy sweet measures, thou murmuring lyre. O sing, for he liveth, as truly he said, yea, Jesus hath risen unharmed from the dead. 4. Shout praises, ye mountains, Vales, catch the refrain. Frisk gaily, ye fountains. Hills, tell it again. He liveth, he liveth, as truly he said. Yea, Jesus hath risen unharmed from the dead. End of section 40 Plaudite Celi Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 41 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 41 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Mortis Portis Fractis By Peter of St. Maurice, sometimes styled Peter of Cluny, but best known as Peter the Venerable, born in Auvergne, 1092 or 1094, began life as a soldier, afterwards became a Benedictine monk, elected abbot of the monastery of his order at Cluny in Burgundy, died there in 1156 or 1157. The greater part of his literary activity was given to the controversy between the Clunian and Cistercian, or black and white monks. This resurrection hymn is taken from some rhythms, proses, sequences, verses, and hymns, contained in the Bibliotheca Glunia Census, 1623. 1. Burst are the iron gates of death, a stronger power prevails, for by the cross the cruel king before the victor quails. 
O clear the light that shines afar where darkness held its sway, for God who made the light at first restores its gladdening ray. 2. That sinners might forever live, the great Creator dies, and by His death to new estate our souls enraptured rise. There Satan groaned in baffled hate, where Christ our triumph won. For what to him was deathly loss, to man was life begun. 3. He grasps the envied prize, but fails, and while he wounds he dies. But calmly and with mighty power the king secures the prize, and leaving earth his triumph won, he seeks his native skies. 4. And now triumphant o'er the grave, the Lord to earth returns. To new create our fallen race, his soul with ardor burns. Down to the dwellings of the lost, to dwell with man he came, and hearts in grievous bondage held, receive him with acclaim. End of section 41 Mortis Portis Fractis Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 42 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 42 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Alleluia, Dolce Carmen. Found in three manuscripts of the 11th century in the British Museum Library, and published by the Surtees Society in the Latin Hymns of the Anglo-Saxon Church from a manuscript of the 11th century in Durham Library. 1. Alleluia, hymn of sweetness, joyful voice of ceaseless praise. Alleluia, pleasant anthem, choirs celestial sweetly raise. This the song of those abiding in the house of God always. 2. Alleluia, Mother Salem, all thy people joy in song. Alleluia, walls and bulwarks evermore the notes prolong. Ah, beside the streams of Babel, exiled weep we o'er our wrong. 3. Alleluia, tis befitting that our song should falter here. Alleluia, can we sing it when the clouds of wrath appear? To bemoan our sin with weeping, now the time is drawing near. 4. Trinity forever blessed, may we sing the gladsome lay, when from sin our souls are severed, and the clouds have passed away, and we share the Easter glory in the realms of endless day. End of section 42. Alleluia, Dulce Carmen. Recording by Eric Metzler. Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 43 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 43 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Ascension, Aeterni Rex Altissime, a hymn of complex authorship and of frequently altered text. 1. Eternal King, enthroned on high, Redeemer strong thy folk to save, Thee, powerful death by death o'ercome, A royal crown of triumph gave. 2. Ascending to the throne of God, Beyond the glittering host of heaven, More power than human hand could give, To thee, victorious King, is given. 3. Three kingdoms bow before thee now, The heavens above, the earth below, Hell's dark abode, And to their Lord on bended knee Submission show. 4. All awe-inspired, the angel host, Behold man's changed estate, amazed. 
our sinful flesh by flesh renewed, a man, true God, to Godhead raised. 5. O Christ, with God who dwellst on high, be thou to us, we humbly pray, a lasting joy while here we wait our great reward in heaven for a. 6. In earnest prayer we come to thee, O may our sins be all forgiven, and lift our hearts by thy rich grace to where thou art thyself in heaven. 7. That when in clouds of judgment dire thou comest with thine angelic host, we may escape the avenger's power, and wear anew the crowns we lost. 8. To thee, O Christ, all glory be, Victor, returning now to heaven. To Father and to Holy Ghost, let praise through endless years be given. End of section 43 Aeterne Rex Altissime Section 44 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 44 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Postquam Hostem et Inferna by Adam of St. Victor 1. Broken are the bands that bound us, spoiled are Satan's realms around us, and to joys supernal now, Christ returns with hosts attending, and as, when at it first descending, angel guards their homage bow. 2. Far above the stars ascending, faith alone his course attending, passing now from mortal sight, to his hand all power is given. One with God he rules in heaven, one in honor and in might. 3. Victor on his throne uplifted, see all rule to him is gifted, o'er creation's wide domain. Now forevermore he liveth, nevermore his life he giveth. Once the sacrifice was slain. 4. Once he wore our flesh in weakness, once he suffered, once in meekness gave himself for sin to die. Now no longer pain he knoweth, perfect peace forever floweth, perfect joy is ever nigh. End of section 44. Postquam hostum et inferna. Section 45 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 45 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Chelos Accendit Hodie Of unknown date and authorship the text is in Daniel's Thesaurus with Alleluia as a refrain. Dr. Neo gives it in his Medieval Hymns and Sequences as apparently of the twelfth century. 1. Today the lingering clouds are riven. Alleluia! Our glorious King ascends to heaven. Alleluia! 2. The heaven and earth His rule obey. Alleluia! Who sits at God's right hand for a. Alleluia. 3. See, all things are fulfilled at last. Alleluia. By David sung in ages past. Alleluia. 4. And on the throne of high renown. Alleluia. The Lord is with his Lord set down. Alleluia. 5. Now blessings on our Lord we shower, Alleluia, in this chief triumph of His power, Alleluia. 6. Let praise the Trinity adore, Alleluia, 
To God be glory evermore. Alleluia. End of section 45 Celos Accendit Hodie Section 46 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 46 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee O Christe qui nostra pole appeared in the Cluniac Breviary of 1686 and in that of Paris, 1736, as also in later French breviaries. From his connection with the revised Paris Breviary, this hymn has been ascribed to Archbishop Charles de Vantemilla, born 1655, died 1746. But in neither the Cluniac nor Paris Breviary is it marked as his. Chandler's version of the hymn, beginning, O Jesu, who art gone before, to thy blessed realms of light, appears in Dr. Martineau's hymns of praise and prayer, with opening lines altered to, The Crucified is gone before, to the blessed realms of light, and with other variations. 1. O Christ, who art ascended now, to realms of bliss above, inspire our souls to rise to thee, upborne by faith and love. 2. Make us to seek those holy joys that they who love receive, that earthly mind can never know nor faithless soul perceive. 3. There where thou art they reap reward who toiled at duty's call, for thou dost give thyself to them, and thou art all in all. 4. By power divine, O let us come where glory cannot fade, and from thy heavenly throne send down the Spirit to our aid. 5. To thee who art at God's right hand, O Christ, to thee be praise, to Father and to Holy Ghost be glory given always. End of section 46 O Christe, qui nostra poli. Section 47 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 47 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Whitsuntide Veni, Creator Spiritus, Mentes Tuorum Visita Of the authorship of this grand hymn nothing unquestioned is known. It has been ascribed to Ambrose, Gregory, Rabanus Maurus, died 856, and Charlemagne. The most widely prevalent opinion ascribes it to the last-named person, but in the judgment of Dr. Julian's assistant editor, quote, The hymn is clearly not the work of St. Ambrose, nor of Charles the Great, nor is there sufficient evidence to allow us to ascribe it either to Gregory the Great, to Rabanus Maurus, or to any of the ecclesiastics connected with the court of Charles the Fat. End quote. The hymn has not yet been found in any manuscript earlier than the latter part of the tenth century. 1. Come, Thou Creator, Spirit, blessed, and with Thy grace our minds pervade. May Thy sweet presence ever dwell within the souls which Thou hast made. 2. Thou Holy Paraclete, the gift sent down to earth from God Most High, Thou font of life and fire and love, Thy holy unction now apply. 3. Sevenfold thy gifts to us are given, Of God's right hand the finger thou. The promise of the Father's grace, With gifts of tongues thou dost endow. 4. Make our dull sense enraptured glow, And let our hearts o'erflow with love. 
the weakness of our flesh inspire with heavenly valor from above. 5. Far from our souls the foe repel, and let us know the bliss of peace. Guide thou our steps, that evermore our hearts may learn from sin to cease. 6. Lead us the Father's love to know, reveal to us the Eternal Son, and Thee the scent of both will praise, while everlasting ages run. End of section 47 Veni Creator Spiritus, Mentes Tuorum Visita Section 48 of Hymns of the Early Church this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 48 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Veni, Sancte Spiritus, et emite coelitus a sequence universally regarded as one of the masterpieces of sacred Latin poetry. As in the case of the Veni Creato Spiritus, the authorship is a matter of dispute. Robert II of France, Hermanus Contractus, born 1013, died 1054, Stephen Langton, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Innocent III, these have all in turn been credited with its production. Dr. Julian, the greatest living authority, sums up the matter of authorship thus, quote, The sequence is clearly not earlier than about the beginning of the 13th century. It is certainly neither by Robert II nor by Hermanus Contractus. The most probable author is Innocent III. End quote. 1. Holy Spirit, come with power, let thy light in darkest hour shine upon our onward way. Father of the humble heart, come, thy choicest gifts impart, light our hearts with heavenly ray. 2. Thou canst best the heart console, sweet thy sojourn with the soul, cooling breath at noon of day. Calm thy rest in toil and care, Soft thy shade in noonday glare. Thou dost chase our tears away. 3. O thou blessed light of light, Let thy beams in radiance bright Fill our inmost heart for a. If thou come not with thy grace, Naught of worth can take thy place, Naught but leads the soul astray. 4. What is filthy, come renew. What is parched, with grace bedew. Heal the wounded in the way. What is stubborn, gently bend. To the chilled, the life glow send. Bring the erring, neath thy sway. 5. To the faithful who repose, In the love thy grace bestows. Be thy sevenfold gift alway. Rich reward for service given, Hope in death and joy in heaven, Joy untold that lasteth a. End of section 48 Veni Sancte Spiritus et emite coelitus Section 49 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 49 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Ophans Amoris Spiritus by Charles Coffin it is a recast of the Nunc Nobis Sancte Spiritus of St. Ambrose. 1. O Holy Spirit, font of love, Thou source of life and joy and peace, With holy fire come from above, 
and bid our hearts their warmth increase. 2. O Thou who didst with love's strong cord unite the Father and the Son, may we who love a common Lord in mutual love be bound in one. 3. Now to the Father throned on high, and unto Christ his only Son, and to the Spirit glory be, now and while endless ages run. End of section 49 O fans amoris spiritus Section 50 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 50 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Trinity Tu Trinitatis Unitas Ascento added to the Roman Breviary in 1568. In a subsequent edition, it is the hymn for lauds on Trinity Sunday. It is made up of the first stanza of a hymn with the same opening, and of the third stanza of the composition Aeterna Coeli Gloria, with a doxology added. 1. O Thou Eternal One in Three, Dread Ruler of the Earth and Sky, Accept the praise we yield to Thee, who, waking, lift our songs on high. 2. The star that tells the approach of day is lingering in the glow of morn, and night and darkness fade away. O holy light, our souls adorn. 3. To God the Father, throned in heaven, to Christ, the one begotten Son, and to the Spirit praise be given, now and while endless ages run. End of section 50 Tu Trinitatis Unitas Section 51 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 51 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee O Pater Sancte, Mitis Atque Pie Found in two manuscripts of the 11th century and included in the York, Sarum, and Aberdeen breviaries. 1. O Holy Father, gracious Thou and tender, O Jesus Christ, Thou much-adored Son, Spirit most sweet, Thou paraclete, defender, eternally one. 2. Trinity holy, unity abiding, True God Thou art, unbounded goodness Thou, Light of the angels, trust of the confiding, We hope in Thee now. 3. Thee all creation pays eternal homage, Thee all Thy creatures songs of glory raise. Now come we humbly, joining in the chorus, O hear Thou our praise. 4. Glory to Thee, O God of power almighty, Triune yet one, and great Thou art and high. Hymns fitly tell Thy honor, praise, and glory, and eternally. End of section 51 O Pater Sancte, Mitis Atque Pie Section 52 of Hymns of the Early Church this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 52 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee 
Adesto Sancte Trinitas. Authorship unknown. It first occurs in a manuscript of the 11th century in the British Museum Library. Has a place in the English breviaries of York, Hereford, and St. Albans, and is printed in the Latin hymns of the Anglo-Saxon Church. 1. Be present, Holy Trinity, one glory thou, one deity. Where'er creation's bounds extend, thou art beginning without end. 2. The hosts of heaven thy praise proclaim, adoring tell thy matchless fame. Earth's threefold fabric joins the song, to bless thee through the ages long. 3. And we, thy humble servants now, to thee in adoration bow. Our suppliant vows and prayers unite with hymns that fill the realms of light. 4. One light, we thee our homage pay. We worship thee, O triple ray. Thou first and last, we speak thy fame, and every spirit lauds thy name. 5. Praise to the Eternal Father be, Thou only Son, all praise to Thee, And Holy Ghost to Thee be praise, Great Triune God, yet one always. End of section 52 Adesto Sancte Trinitas Section 53 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 53 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee All Saints Pugnate Christe Milites Given in editions of the Paris Breviary, subsequent to 1736, along with the hymn Quilestis, O Jerusalem, for the vigil of All Saints' Day at Lauds, author not traced. 1. Christian soldiers in the conflict, bear the banner of the cross. Rich reward shall crown the victor, more than recompense for loss. 2. Not with paltry palms that wither will the brow be gaily crowned, but with light that shines eternal, and with heavenly joy renowned. 3. Yours are mansions fair and comely, there your souls in bliss shall rest. Stars shall sparkle in their radiance on the pathway of the blessed. 4. Earthly joys are faint and fleeting, Earthly favors quickly fade. Heavenwards lift your eyes, Expecting there your true reward is laid. 5. God be praised who crowns the victor, Christ be praised who saves from sin. Equal praise to God the Spirit, By whose aid we fight and win. End of section 53 Pugnate Christe Milites Section 54 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 54 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Audinos Rex Christe. This pilgrim or processional hymn was first published from a manuscript of the eleventh century by de Meville in Paris, 1847, reprinted by Neil in his Hymne Ecclesiae in 1851 as Cantus Peregrinatorum. 1. Hear us, O Christ, our King, Lord, hear the prayer we bring, and take the ordering of our way. Refrain. 
Thy mercy, Lord, extend, Thy mercy, Lord, extend, And take the ordering of our way. 2. O three in unity, Protect us all each day, In this thy path divine we pray. 3. Send us a faithful guide, An angel to abide, Whose hand shall lead us to thy throne. 4. Our upward path direct, From every foe protect, And bring us back to claim our own. 5. Thy strong right arm extend, And with thy left defend, And save us from the enemy. 6. O thou creator wise, Soon may our longing eyes The glory of thy kingdom see. 7. Now glory let there be, O Father, unto thee, From age to age eternally. End of section 54 Audinos Rex Christe Section 54 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 54 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Audinos Rex Christe this pilgrim or processional hymn was first published from a manuscript of the eleventh century by de Meville in Paris, 1847, reprinted by Neal in his Hymne Ecclesiae in 1851 as Cantus Peregrinatorum. 1. Hear us, O Christ, our King. Lord, hear the prayer we bring and take the ordering of our way. Refrain Thy mercy, Lord, extend, Thy mercy, Lord, extend, and take the ordering of our way. 2. O three in unity, protect us all each day, in this thy path divine we pray. 3. Send us a faithful guide, an angel to abide, whose hand shall lead us to thy throne. 4. Our upward path direct, from every foe protect, and bring us back to claim our own. 5. Thy strong right arm extend, and with thy left defend, and save us from the enemy. 6. O Thou, Creator wise, soon may our longing eyes the glory of Thy kingdom see. 7. Now glory let there be, O Father, unto Thee, from age to age eternally. End of section 54 Audinos Rex Christe Section 56 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 56 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee O Esca Viatorum Ascribed by some to Thomas Aquinas, but believed by latest and best authorities to have been composed by some unknown German Jesuit of the seventeenth century. It has not been traced further back than the Mainz Gesangbuch of 1661, where it is styled, quote, Him on the True Bread of Heaven. End quote. 1. O food for pilgrims pining, O bread for angels shining, O manna fresh from heaven, In bountiful completeness, 
O may thy heavenly sweetness to hungering hearts be given. 2. O font of love surprising, from Jesus heart uprising, a pure refreshing flow, not else our thirst allayeth, for this the pilgrim prayeth, this draught of love bestow. 3. Thy face we come revering, O Jesus, now appearing, in sacramental rite. O when in heaven before it, unveiled we may adore it, our faith absorbed in sight. End of section 56 O esca viatorum Section 57 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 57 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Jesu, Dulcedo Cordium in the Paris Breviary of 1736, this is the hymn for lauds of the Festival of the Transfiguration. It is composed of six stanzas of the Gospel Rhythm of St. Bernard, beginning, Jesu Dulcis Memoria, the fourth stanza of which begins, Jesu Dulcedo Cordium. 1. Jesu, Delight of Every Heart Thou font of life, thou source of light. Earth can no joy so real impart, No soul can form a hope so bright. 2. Abide with us, O Lord, we pray, And cause thy heavenly light to glow. Drive from our minds the clouds away, And let the world thy sweetness know. 3. When thou dost seek the humble heart, Thy heavenly truth is freely given. Then vanities of earth depart, Then glows the fervent love of heaven. 4. O Jesus, of thy wondrous grace, Make us thy boundless love to know. And when we see thee face to face, To us thy matchless glory show. 5. They know how sweet the Lord can be, Who deeply drink His love divine. How blessed who find their all in Thee, Nor thirst for other joys than Thine. 6. O Thou the spring whence pity flows, Light from the fatherland to cheer, To us Thy glorious light disclose, Nor let dark clouds afflict us here. End of section 57 Jesu Dulcedo Cordium Section 58 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 58 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Verbum Supernum Prodians By St. Thomas of Aquino, the Angelical Doctor, born about 1255 to 1227. Educated in the Benedictine Monastery of Monte Cassino and at the University of Naples, Having resolved to become a Dominican friar, St. Thomas, after much opposition from his family, took the vows of obedience, celibacy, and poverty at Naples in 1243. The remainder of his life was spent in the service of the church at Paris, Cologne, Rome, Naples, Bologna. When on his way to attend the Second Council of Lyon, he died in the Benedictine Abbey of Fossa Nuova, in the Diocese of Terracina, in 1274. 
This hymn was written about 1263 for the office for use on Corpus Christi. It is found in the Roman, Mozarabic, York, Sarum, Aberdeen, Paris, and other breviaries, its primary use being at Lauds in Corpus Christi. 1. The Word, proceeding from above, yet still at God's right hand in heaven, came to his work impelled by love, and soon life's day declined to even. 2. A traitor in his chosen band betrays his Lord to death and grave, but ere he died, with his own hand, himself as food to man he gave. 3. In double form the gift was made, he gave them of his flesh and blood, so that the feast his love pervade might prove for man sufficient food. 4. By birth a friend in him we find, as food he fills the festal board, in death the ransom of our kind, in heaven he is our great reward. 5. O saving sacrifice that made the gates of heaven stand open wide, be thou our strength, come to our aid, when foes would crush on every side. 6. To thee, good shepherd, who for meat dost give thy flesh to feed thine own, to Father and to Paraclete, be praised through ages yet unknown. End of section 58 Fairbum Supernum Prodiens Section 59 of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 59 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Gravi me terrore pulsas by Peter Damiani Born at Ravenna about 988 Became a religious of the order of the monks of the Holy Cross of Fontavellano Of which community he subsequently became the superior Founding in his day five monasteries under the same rule Was induced by Pope Stephen the Ninth to accept the position of Cardinal Bishop of Ostia an office he was allowed to resign by Pope Alexander II in 1062. In retirement, he lived a life of great ascetism and self-mortification. On his return journey from Ravenna, whither he had gone as papal legate on a mission of inquiry and reform, he died of fever at Faenza in the monastery of Our Lady, 1072. 1. Terror Crim the soul oppresses when the day of death is near sighs the heart the reins are sundered quakes each part with anxious fear while the mind the woe detaileth of the conflict to appear two spectacle all woe inspiring who its terror can portray see the course of life is ended and the sickening flesh gives way for the wrestling soul in triumph breaks the bands that bid her stay. 3. Sense decays and fails expression, dark the world to melting eye, and the troubled breast in anguish, gasping, breaths her burden sigh. Grace of form and glow of beauty from the withering body die. 4. Thoughts and words and deeds forgotten crowd around in grim array, and unwilling eyes behold them, be they closed or turned away. In the heart they seem to rankle, turn he wheresoever he may. 5. Vain the vow of new obedience, time for vowing is no more. Vain the sorrow of repentance, for the day of grace is o'er. Conscience now the tortured sinner gnaws with pangs unfelt before. 6. 
draughts of sweet deluding pleasure give the bitter dregs at last come unending pain and anguish with the short-lived rapture past then what once appeared so worthy is a sight as worthless cast seven then o christ thou king victorious come with succour in my plight when the soul is freed from bondage in its hour of darkest night come o christ thy help extending free me from the accuser's might eight headlong may the prince of darkness with the host's infernal fall though the shepherd of salvation bid me follow at thy call to the land where fullness dwelleth and those eyes shall see it all End of section fifty nine Gravime Terrore Pulsas Recording by Jule Niedermeyer Section sixty of Hymns of the Early Church This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section sixty of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Apropinquat in dies in qua justus erit quies. A center taken from the hymn Heo Heo Mala Mundi Vita, published by Dumeville in 1847 from a manuscript of the 12th century in the National Library at Paris. The poem from which the center is taken consists of nearly 400 lines, and the center begins at line 325. 1. Lo, the day, the day approacheth, when the just shall rest in peace, when the patient souls shall triumph, and the vile from troubling cease. 2. Day of life, who can abide it? Day of light, unseen before. Death, the fell destroyer, dieth. Night and darkness are no more. 3. See. He comes from ages longed for, long expected king of kings. Now he tarries not, and with him all his great salvation brings. 4. Oh, how blessed, oh, how joyful, oh, what sweetness it shall be, when the eyes of those who loved him shall their lord and master see. 5. Jesus then with sweet affection and in tones of tenderest love shall invite his faithful people to the choice prepared above. 6. Ye who held my truth unsullied, faithful stood in world of sin, suffered for the name ye honoured, see the choice ye sought to win. 7. See the heavenly kingdom promised long reserved but now revealed now behold it now possess it now the princely sceptre wield eight o oh, how sweet are earthly losses in the midst of gain like this o oh, how vain the world's possessions at the cost of so much bliss nine o oh, how blessed then the mourners who for christ earth sorrow bore by a scornful world neglected, they shall reign for evermore. 10. Now no terror, crim shall haunt them, tears and sorrows are no more. Grinding want shall never afflict them, crippled age nor weakness sore. 11. Peace eternal there abideth, hearts with festive gladness bound. There is youth with perfect vigor, and with bloom unfading ground. 12. O just judge, in boundless mercy, call me heavenward by and by, for my soul is faint with longing, and I wait with tearful eye. End of section 60. Apropinquat in in dies in qua justus erit quies. Recording by Jule Niedermeyer. Section 61 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain.
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 61 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee Jerusalem Luminosa Veri Pacis Visio The second in a group of three hymns, of all which the author is quite unknown, first published by Monet from a 15th century manuscript at Karlsruhe. This hymn has for title in the original De Gloria Coelestis Jerusalem Quadotis Glorificati Corporis of the glory of the heavenly Jerusalem, so far as concerns the endowments of the glorified body, and was a favorite at dedications and other festivals. All the three of the series will be found, with English renderings, in Dr. Neal's hymns, chiefly medieval, on the joys and glories of paradise. 1. O city girt with glory, thou scene of quiet rest, where dwells the King Eternal, O beautiful and blessed. Thy streets are filled with glorious song, the praises of a myriad throng. 2. With stones of polished beauty is reared thy structure fair, and gems and gold and crystal are sparkling everywhere. With pearls thy gates are glittering gay, and golden is thy bright highway. 3. Forever and in sweetness are hallelujahs given, unending is the feast day, the royal feast of heaven. Whatever within thy walls is stored is pure and holy to the Lord. 4. No clouds or somber curtain thy glorious brightness screen. There shines a sun eternal, and I at noonday seen. There is no night to give repose, for no one toil or trouble knows. 5. The vernal glow of springtime is bright and lasting there. The wealth of summer's richness is scattered everywhere, and that fair realm can never know the autumn's blast or winter's snow. 6. The notes that fall in sweetness where birds and woodland sing, the sounds of softest music that winds in summer bring, are wafted over that city bright in strains of unalloyed delight. 7. Their youth adorned with vigor, ne'er into age declines, no aged fears the mortal, nor for the past repines, for past and future are unknown, the present reigns in heaven alone. 8. No fleshly law can triumph, and over reason ride, with bodies pure and stainless, the spirit shall abide, and power of flesh and power of will shall both one common law fulfill. 9. O bright and heavenly glory, this fragile frame shall wear, when health and strength and freedom shall crown with beauty rare. In pleasures, droughts, no sorrow know, but everlasting joys bestow. 10. Now gladly bear the burden, with seal thy task maintain, and gifts shall crown thy labor, and all thy loss be gain. When decked with splendor thou shalt be, where glory dwells eternally. End of section 61, Hymns of the Early Church. Section 62 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 62 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Orbs Beata Jerusalem. The author of this fine old rugged hymn is unknown. It is conjectured to be a 6th or 7th century date. It passed into many medieval breviaries, sometimes entire, but often divided into two parts. It was largely used for the dedication of churches. Part 1. 1. O vision bright of heavenly peace, Jerusalem on high, with living stones thy walls are built, all beauteous to the eye. A high-born bride, the angels stand around thee, an attendant band. 2. From heaven she cometh down prepared her nuptial hour to grace. With jewels decked she shall be led to see her bridegroom's face. O fair her streets, her bulwarks fair, for purest gold is everywhere. 3. Her gates, adorned with glowing pearl, stand open day and night, and hither come the faithful souls and enter in his right, for whom they bore the cruel shame that earth has linked to his dear name. 4. All precious stones and shapely all by sore affliction made, each in its place the heavenly king with his own hand has laid. Such was the plan that with the elect the walls of Zion should be decked. End of section 62. Orbs Beata Jerusalem. Section 63 of Hymns of the Early Church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 63 of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee. Orbs Beata Jerusalem. Part 2. 1. Most firm the sure foundation stands, and strong the cornerstone. 
to bear the walls that proudly rise and bind them into one, and Zion all her trust will lay upon the strength of Christ alway. 2. Within that city God beloved flow streams of praise along, and towers and bulwarks echo forth the gladness of the song. Tis praise to God continually, the three in one, the one in three. 3. Within thine earthly temple, Lord, we meet to seek thy face. O in thy loving kindness, here, diffuse thy heavenly grace. Grant as thy people humbly bow thine ample benediction now. 4. Be found of all who seek thee here, and every need supply. The joys of heaven that cheer the soul, when streams of earth are dry. And in the greatness of thy love, hereafter open heaven above. End of section 63. Orbs Beata Jerusalem. End of Hymns of the Early Church by John Brownlee.